Welcome folks, I'm Gary Ryan here from Organisations That Matter and it's my absolute pleasure to be bringing to you Creating Winning Resumes and Employer's Perspective as we interview Pauline Bennett who is the Manager of Organisation Development from the City of Whitehorse. So just quickly Pauline, a quick hello to you. Hello Gary. Welcome aboard and thanks for giving up your precious time to uh, have a chat with us today. Thank you. Um, I'll just do a little bit of a brief inter introduction to our audience so they know what's going on. I'm aware that for some of them today is the first time that they're experiencing a webinar. So just briefly, Organisations That Matter is uh, the organisation that I have created. And in simple terms, what I do is I work with people who are interested in moving beyond being good. So whether that be at an individual level, at a team level, a departmental level, or in fact at an organisational level. So I have a whole range of tools and strategies that I use to help folk move beyond being good. Because lots of people are good, lots of teams are good, lots of organisations are good, but it's about being better than that that folk are generally very interested in and that's the space that I work in. And clearly getting yourself jobs and resumes is clearly part of moving beyond being good and that's why you've bothered to give up your time to be with us here today. So the time that we're going to spend together, we'll have a little bit of time going through the introduction as I'm doing right now. We'll spend the vast majority of our time, of our total of 40 minutes, uh, interviewing Pauline and finding out her perspective from a very experienced person's point of view on resumes and the sorts of lessons and things and tips and tools that you can use. We'll also have a, an opportunity at the end to ask any questions that haven't been addressed, so that will be a chance for you to open up your microphones and or type your questions in, and then we'll just spend a few minutes wrapping up at the end. All right, uh, just covering off what we'll be talking about with Pauline, who again is the Manager of Organisation Development at the City of Whitehorse. We'll be looking at why bother crafting your resume in the first place and what do recruiters look for in resumes. Does yours meet the health check? So we'll find out what Pauline means by that. And will your resume clinch that interview, meaning get you in to have an interview, which is what the, the purpose of a resume is, and any other considerations. And clearly what you also need to do right now as a result of what you are learning from Pauline. So Pauline, um, just to get started, if you want to just have a quick chat a little bit about um, the City of Whitehorse and your role and, and your, your time in uh, government. Uh, thanks, Gary. Um... I'm the Manager of Organisation Development at the City of Whitehorse um, and in that portfolio um, I look after learning and development, human resources and occupational health and safety and work cover. We have a workforce of about 1,200 people uh, so it's, it's quite a big portfolio and we also manage another five or 600 um, volunteers and as people would be aware volunteers are becoming more and more treated like employees in terms of um, what we need to do for them. So it's, it's quite a big portfolio and um, I've been at Whitehorse for six years, just ticked over six years and uh, before that I've been in a couple of other councils, um, a statutory authority for a long time uh, and I ran my own consulting business for a while too when my children were quite young. So I um, had a variety of experience in both the public and private sector. You've definitely been very busy and with 1,200 staff across a wide variety of roles, as you've said, Pauline, uh, I'm sure you've uh, seen many, many uh, recruitment processes and certainly overseen them uh, for those different roles. And I suppose what we're here to hear about today is some of the themes and patterns that you've learned as, uh, as a result of that experience over time. Yes, yes. And um, I, I should mention that um, Whitehorse uh, in the local government sector is um, considered quite highly as an innovative council. Um, we were one of the first councils in Australia to undertake uh, workforce planning. Um, we did that about six years ago now and um, we're a benchmark that's used um, throughout the sector in Australia um, for workforce planning. We also um, have uh, some innovative industrial relations initiatives at um, Whitehorse including Family Violence Leave, a Sick Leave Bank and um, we're also uh, leading in leadership development uh, where we fac uh, focus on action learning uh, programs. So um, Whitehorse has got quite a good reputation in the sector for um, innovative um, uh, organisation development practice. 
which is which is exactly Pauline while we've got you here today now you to, just to start us off you use the term crafting your resume and I'm interested what, what does that team that term crafting your resume mean well um, we, we um, suggest that people should uh, craft their resumes because um, as a recruiter, and I don't think I'm alone in this, we may only spend between 15 and 30 seconds, which is about uh, five minutes less than what we've just uh, spent in the opening segment of this seminar, um, to read a resume. So if you're going to make an impression in that 15 to 30 seconds that the recruiter reads your resume, you need to hit the mark with the key selection criteria and um, provide a window to um, yourself, to the recruiter, so that, that, um, that they know what you want to achieve in your career, but also where you've been and how you fit uh, in with the role that they're recruiting for. So, so given it's a crafting, if I, if I think back to the old folk who are crafts people uh, in, in historical terms, crafting is something that just doesn't happen the first time you do it. So I, I'm sort of hearing you also suggest that if no. you're crafting your resume, it's, it's an ongoing process. Is, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. My resume um, that uh, I use for, uh, that I always have ready, because you never know when a headhunter is going to ring you. Um, I look at probably twice a year, and I would recommend that people do do that. Just sit down, add in their most recent experience. But also, um, when you are applying for a role, that the your stock standard resume is not what you submit. You go through your resume with the key selection criteria sitting next to you, and you craft that resume to fit. Um, I don't, I'm not saying that you should um, embellish the the truth, but that your um, experience yes. fits the key selection criteria that uh, is required for that role. Um, for example, you may have a list of things, um, if you're an experienced person that you've achieved throughout your career, um, if the key number one key selection criteria is one of the things in that list, you would put that thing up at the top of the list in your resume. So you're crafting your resume to fit the key select selection criteria for that role. Just a little bit of information too about some other things that I do. And some of you would be aware, but not all of you would be aware, that I do a lot of work in planning for personal success. One of the aspects for folk and their careers is that too often, uh, from my experience, people do career planning that is separate to the rest of their life. And as we can see through this illustration, we do actually have Jock McNeish online who did this illustration for me. And Jock is from Strategic Im Images and an absolute delight to work with and, uh, in fact, one of my personal mentors. And I have an online planning, uh, life planning uh, program for personal success and for planning for life balance, of which a career obviously plays a huge part in that. And if you go to www.planforpersonalsuccess.com, you can see some information about that platform. Uh, one of the things about the Yes for Success system, which is what it's called, um, it enables you to go through a 10-module process to develop your very clear plan for life balance and personal success. And it also has an, uh, a, 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 an ongoing platform within that community where members uh, sharing what they're doing and also you have direct access to myself. Um, I have a lot of experience in having facilitated the face-to-face -face version of this program now to over 5,800 people where I can help guide you through your planning part of that program but also part of your execution of your plan and membership for that community is for a 24-month period which is also something a little bit different. Uh, you have my contact details on the screen uh, so please feel free to get in contact and again you have the otmacademy.com to contact to be able to get the recording of the webinar. I would really like to again thank Pauline for her time. It's been a delight to work with you today, Pauline. Uh, any final comments that you'd like to quickly share with folk? No, it's been a pleasure sharing that information, Gary, and I hope it's been of some use to your um, participants. Thank you. No doubt.